As humans, we feel things, and sometimes our emotions can get the better of us just as we can get the better of them at other times. Grief is a very intense feeling associated with loss or failure in any form, and it can do anything to a person from triggering suicidal thoughts to acting as a launch pad to greatness. The latter is often dreamed and preferred amongst humans. When we lose a loved one, we think about a lot of things, like how it shouldn't have been them, or what things we could have done to prevent them from passing. Sometimes we get some days or weeks to show them how we love them before we pass, and at other times we don't. We are simply unprepared and in times like this, it is not uncommon for our emotions to be in an unsettled state. What we do with these emotions that have been dug up is very pivotal in determining how we fare after we realize that they are gone for real. Some athletes have played their best games after losing a loved one by channeling all their fury, confusion, and hurt into what their next game is. Some of these people even fare better than they ever have before, and sometimes never had such an experience again. This sudden but often temporary improvement in performance can be due to anger, fear, or a desire to win something as a payback for their loss. In this video, we will take a look at some of the most insane soccer games after the death of a loved one. But before we get to that, if you are brand new to the channel, please take a moment to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on my notifications. This is a brand new channel and we are barely at 3,000 subscribers. So if you really enjoy the content and you want to see more, then once we get to 10,000 subscribers, we're going to be uploading three videos a week. And let's start with number one, Darius Formella. The 24-year-old Polish footballer doubles as a striker and a left winger for Sacramento Republic in the USL Championship. He was signed last year mid-season with a good track record and great potential. He was in the news last year after he scored the winning goal in a game against Rio Grande Valley FC on the 15th of September 2019. He immediately broke down, overwhelmed with emotion. One would have been quick to think that the display of emotion was a display of joy for scoring the winning goal. However, it was later revealed that Formella had just lost his father. It was also revealed that he did not inform his teammates prior to the game. His only teammate, Haris Chantzopoulos, right there on the pitch, and we could see his reaction in real time as he hugged Formella. This is ordinarily not the kind of circumstance that one would want to be in the news for. At the time, he wasn't willing to talk deeply about the goal, even though it gained a lot of attention. After a while, a video was released by the club in which he talked about the ugly and painful incident surrounding that victory. He also explained his reasons for not telling his teammates before the game, giving some insight into how he was feeling at that time. One can imagine how difficult it must have been for him to talk about what happened. However, it is clear that he did need some time to grieve. It is not unlikely that his grief and hurt were important driving forces for his goal. At number two, we have Cristiano Ronaldo, arguably the most popular player on this list. Cristiano Ronaldo is a Portuguese professional footballer. He currently plays forward for Juventus and is the captain of the Portuguese national team. The 35-year-old has built a formidable career in about 15 years driving people to call him one of the greatest of all time. The year 2005 was an especially tragic one for him as he lost his father in September that year. His father was 52 and had served the Portuguese military in Angola for years. On the 29th of October, the very same year, Ronaldo scored the only goal, a header, which happened to be Manchester United's 1000th Premier League goal in a 4-1 loss to Middlesbrough. Although his team didn't win, he put a lot of effort and scored his header goal during injury time. He scored 10 goals in the competitions that year and was awarded the FIFA Pro Special Young Player of the Year award. At number 3, we have Daniel James, who plays as a winger for Manchester United at the Premier League level and is also on the Wales national team. He signed for Manchester United in June 2019, but he started his professional career at Swansea City in February of 2018. He also plays as an attacking midfielder and has been praised for his speed and skill. He scored the winning goal, sealing the 4-0 win for Manchester United against Chelsea in August of 2019. It was pretty clear to everyone how important the goal was to Daniel as he celebrated very emotionally. This was his debut goal and he dedicated it to his father who passed in May of the same year. When approached by Alex Milne of the Daily Mirror, he said, amazing really. It would have been amazing for him to be here today, but he's not, and I dedicate that goal to him. I scored the winning penalty in Cardiff last week, which was amazing. 
beyond the winning goal, he was seen to show great potential in the said match despite being the only attacking signing by United in the summer of that year. His counterattack and balance game were top notch, and he was praised by the club manager, who was quoted to have said that the boy is exactly what you want from a professional. He's got skills and his pace. He has also spoken to the Manchester Evening News about how his father drives him on to do even more in depth. At number four, we have Ronaldinho, who is considered to be one of the greatest players of all time and one of the best of his generation. The Brazilian Portuguese former football player was an attacking midfielder who also functioned as a forward and a winger at other times. On the 6th of October 2012, Ronaldinho scored three goals and gave two assists in a match against Atletico Mineiro, his team in figurines. He scored his first goal in the 12th minute and he was seen to kneel in prayer before he started to cry. That moment was indeed very touching as he was known for his smile on and off the pitch. This reaction was in response to the death of his stepfather on the 5th of October of the same year. He had died from a heart attack. Ronaldinho went on to score a second goal with a 32 minute free kick and capped his hat trick in a 63rd minute penalty. He set up Rivers and Bernard's goal too, and Carlos Caesar topped it off with a final goal at the 82nd minute. That game was indeed a fabulous one and revealed that at 32, Ronaldinho still had a lot left in the tank. At number five, we have Billy Sharp. Billy Louis Sharp is an English professional footballer who plays as a striker for Sheffield United. Sharp's son was born on October 27, 2011, but he died two days later. At the time, he was a striker for Doncaster. He scored the first goal in the match against Middlesbrough in November of 2011. Before the kickoff, the crowd paid a tribute to his family with a minute-long applause. The game ended in a 3-1 in favor of Doncaster. Sharp scored the first goal within the first 14 minutes of the game with a splendid volley. After the goal, he lifted his shirt to reveal a message, which read, That's for you, son. He wasn't penalized by the referee, although he could have been. He described the goal as the most important in his career in a tweet which read, My goal tonight was the most important goal of my career, dedicated to my brave boy Louis Jacob Sharp. I love you, son. Sleep tight. That's for you, son. He also added, to captain, the side tonight was an honor and a pleasure. The minute applause I was crying meant so much to me, thanks to both sets of fans. My goal had to be something special tonight for my special boy. I'm so proud of him and his mom. At number six, we have Carly Telford. This is another unique entry, as Telford plays for Chelsea and the English national team as a goalkeeper. She made history in June 2019 as she played in the FIFA Women's World Cup. She helped her team make it to the round of 16 in a 1-0 win against Argentina. Speaking of FIFA.com, she said, I was ready for this. It wasn't an overwhelming experience for me because I've been waiting so long for it, so I felt ready. Obviously, I wish my mom could have been there to see it, and in all honesty, she hated watching me play football. So even if she could be here, I am not sure if she would have come to the stadium because she was always so serious. She had been waiting to play in the Women's World Cup for 12 years. She lost her mom in 2018 and was only able to fulfill her 12 year long dream about a year later. Her teammates were happy for her as she had waited so long. She spoke about how her mother always wanted her to follow her dreams. And this is an indication that she took her dreams by the throat following her mother's passing. Now, number seven, we have Christian Press. Christian Press is an American soccer player for the National Women's Soccer League and Utah Royals FC. She is currently the 10th all-time best after 138 appearances with 58 goals. Press's mother passed on earlier last year when she suffered a brain aneurysm while undergoing treatment for stage 4 globulostoma, which was diagnosed in August of 2018. Her father, Cody Press, who was also a soccer player in his prime, spoke about how difficult it had been for them since her mother, Stacy, had passed. He recounted Christian's first goal in the 2-1 victory over England. He remembers looking at her as she turned her gaze to the sky lifting her hands to celebrate her goal. She confirmed that she was thinking about her mother after the game. The game was in the semifinals of the Women's World Cup and the US had been doing pretty great in the tournament. Press scored the first goal at the 10th minute with a perfectly executed Kelly O'Hara cross. She played in place of Megan Rapinoe, who was absent for not participating in warmups. Rapinoe also had a minor hamstring strain. However, Press apparently made the absence of Rapinoe 
way less noticeable. At number eight, we have Odaya Nigalo, who is a 31-year-old Nigerian football player who is a striker for Manchester United on loan from Shanghai Greenland Chenhua. His first goal in Manchester United was the final blow, sealing the 5-0 win against Club Brugge on the 27th of February 2020. His goal came in with an assist from a teammate, Juan Mata, after Bruno Fernandez's penalty goal. This goal was a big deal for Igalo, who slid to the corner flag, and after rejoicing with his teammates, he proceeded to give a heartwarming tribute to his elder sister, Mary Atole, who had passed a few months prior. He lifted his jersey to reveal a white shirt in which her image and date of death were printed. She had collapsed in her home while preparing her children for school, and she was only 43 years old at the time. Igalo revealed that she was a die-hard fan of Manchester United and had stayed through to the fandom even though her husband and kids supported other clubs. While speaking to The Sun in an interview after the match, he said, The painful part for me is that I now have signed for United, but she is not here to see it. However, I know she is up there watching me. That is why I'm going to play with her name on my boots. So she is always with me at Old Trafford or in any game for Manchester United. Every goal I score from now on until I finish my career will be dedicated to God and to her. He said she had always prayed for him to get signed to the club and expressed his sadness at her absence now that her prayers had been answered. He also promised to dedicate every goal he scored after this to her. Clearly her death gave him something new to live for, making her proud. And at number nine, we have Frank Lampard, who is a football manager who used to be a football player. He was recognized as one of the best Chelsea players of all time and one of the most formidable midfielders of his generation. He is currently the head coach of Chelsea, and he made his 202nd and 203rd strike in a match against Aston Villa. He was able to beat Booby Tembling's club tally in this match, which was his 606th appearance. He scored twice sealing the 2-1 victory in honor of his late mother, Pat, who died of pneumonia in 2008. He described her as his biggest supporter. Lampard was particularly amazed to have beaten Tambling's record, but he didn't fail to appreciate the contributions of his teammates in achieving this. The game was a tough one, but winning it was a big win for Chelsea, and that happened. When he spoke to Sky News, he said, it's amazing to break the record, and I'm thankful to every one of my teammates because they're the ones that put it on a plate for me sometimes and the fans. They've all been willing to do it for a long time and probably get frustrated alongside me not getting there. Indeed, he was not expecting to achieve such a feat, but his mother's memory likely affected his approach. Grief is one of the most intense feelings that humans experience, and it can last for anything from a few days to years. However, what is important is how well people are able to challenge such a negative feeling to productive ventures. The above players were able to do it wonderfully by channeling the grief from the loss of their loved ones towards winning. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like. Aside from that, I'm your boy Flight FC, and I'll catch you guys in our next upload.